Arizona straight to the line. There's the snap to Murray. Murray looks left, pumps once, looking, looking. A lot of time. Now he throws, and it's intercepted by the Lions. Picked off down the left sideline. Orvalier picks up a block at the 30, 25, 20, Amani 10, 5, and he's spun out of bounds right there. I see you, 24. I see you. Welcome to the 20 Minute in the Huddle podcast, presented by Microsoft. And look, it's regular season time. Camp is finally over. And this is the fun part, right? And unfortunately, there were some tough decisions that had to be made in Allen Park this week. Um, Lions had to go from 80 players to 53. And, and that's always a tough time for you know GM, for head coach, obviously for players. I mean, uh, you're talking about some dreams being dashed. And, and, and it's a tough time. But it's also exciting because now you've got more clarity, right? Now you know kind of what the Detroit Lions are taking. Um, you know, that first week against Philly and, and, and kind of what you're rolling with and the decisions that were made. And look, when it comes to the roster itself, you know, there are a couple things that surprised me. Not a ton. Um, I You know, first off, I think I'll say this, the decisions I think were a lot harder for Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell this year versus what they had to make last year. And that's a credit to Dan and the whole front office and, um, you know, and, and Brad and, and just getting – you know, some of the guys that they have in, um, you know, drafting the way they did, you know, some of the free agents that they signed and, and the development of some of the young guys, um, you know, going into their second, third seasons that are now expected um, to take big jumps. And, you know, I guess maybe a couple things that surprised me right off the bat um, were Anthony Pittman um, and, and kind of where that linebacker group shaped out. I thought that was one. He's a core special teams guy, one of their leading special teamers. Um, and, you know, the fact that, you know, he didn't make the 53. I'm glad he's on the practice squad, which is great for him. Um, but they had some core special teamers there already. You know, Chris Board is a core special teamer. Robert Woods is, 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 is a, you know, core special teamer. Bobby Price, you know. So, um, you know, they've got uh, some guys to kind of fill that. I was a little bit surprised by that one. Um, you know, Jamar Jefferson, um, you know, making it then not, I thought was, you know, a, a, an interesting way. They've only got three running backs on the active roster right now. They're a little short there. We'll see if that changes with, with Justin Jackson or, um, you know, with, with somebody else from the practice squad, maybe getting, getting pushed up. I, I I really thought um, Igwebuke um, w- was going to make the team. I had him making it just because of um, what he did last year in terms of kick return, right? He was, you know, the seventh best kick returner in terms of average per kickoff return. Um, and, you know, it was a little surprising. We had heard Dan Campbell and, and everyone talk all through camp that, look, we value what he they do in the regular season. We didn't see much of him in the preseason. We thought maybe that was why, but um, it just they didn't really fall that way. And so, um, you know, those were a, a couple of the interesting ones for me. Obviously, the quarterback situation, um, you know, is what it is. Um you know, Tim Boyle and, and, and David Blau were, were really just given every opportunity to kind of, to kind of take that backup job, and um, neither one did, and that's just the reality of it. Um, they bring in Nate Sudfeld, uh, you know, a guy who, who's been a backup in the league for a while now, former Big Ten guy, right, over at Indiana. So, you know, we'll see if he can, you know, you know, get up to speed rather quickly, what that means for Jared in terms of, you know, what he can provide in, in that meeting room. So, um you know, there's some interesting roster decisions, but but not a ton that really surprised me, at least, um, from being around camp every day and, and, and watching the preseason. I think the guys that, that, that are the guys, uh, you kind of, you know, you, you know who those guys are and, um, you know, that those are the guys they're going to roll with. You know, I thought it was really interesting, and, and it's something I want to include in, in this, you know, segment of the podcast is we got a chance to talk to Brad Holmes and the, the general manager and Ray Agnew, the assistant general manager, Thursday afternoon and you know that's a half hour session and, and it's always terrific because you can go through you know really the the line of questioning the the roster some of the decisions that were made some of the thinking there and you know I, I just kind of want to highlight a few things from from that obviously you know Brad talked about the the difference in the decision um, and, and the difficulty of the decisions from last year to this year and here's what he had to say about that. I would say just going back to last year, you know, uh, trying to cut down to 85, you know, probably after the first few days at camp, probably could have told you, yep, 
got to five. And then you got to cut down to 80. And it's like, yep, got it. And even I told you guys last year, you know, we cut down to 53 last year. I mean, Dan and I maybe had probably one or two really discussions, you know, that needed to be made. But, you know, fast forward to this year, you know, just getting down to 85 was – it was difficult. You know, you kind of got to about three, and then it's like, okay, I'm not sure if I want to quite do this yet. And so it's just it, – it made it hard. And I think all of that dates all the way back to, you know, start of this off season, and, you know, uh, everything that everybody put in during free agency, our pro personnel department, uh, you know, Mike Disner, um, and just getting the right guys in, getting the right guys that fit. You know, you get go through the drafts, you know, our college scouting department uh, do, doing a great job. So you get this boost in talent. And so you combine the the boost of talent with a uh, great coaching staff. And, you know, here we are. And we had a lot of tough decisions to make. And, you know, I even know that right now it's it's the 53 and – there's a lot made about who made the team and who made, but I mean, even the guys we have on practice squad that we were able to get back, I mean, uh, it, it's it's not over. So obviously, you know, the decisions were a lot tougher. Yeah, I mean, even I thought it was interesting, even at those, you know, that that first initial cut from 90 to 85, like very early on in camp, um, you know, that he said, hey, there you know, you knew who three guys were, and then it was a tough decision, you know. And, and the fact that, you know, they only had one or two d- tough discussions when they were going from 80 to 53, again, it just shows kind of where they think this roster is. Um, and that's a good thing. Look, you want tough decisions, right? Every single year, you sh- there should be a, a group of guys that you talk about as general manager and head coach that it's a really tough cut. It, and, and that's just – that means your roster is headed in the right direction. And so, um, you know, I, I I thought that was good to hear. And, you know, we knew it was going to come up, and it came up rather quickly, you know, the backup quarterback um, position and, and kind of the thinking there. And you can think of this, you know, two different ways. They gave David Blau and Tim Boyle every opportunity. And, and, and you know, Dan said as much that, hey, hey look, we wanted – we saw some things, even though Tim Boyle didn't win games last year in his opportunities to start, Brad said, we, we, we saw some things that we think, you know, were there that, that we can that work with that he can build on. The same thing with, with Blau, you know, from his experience starting five games in, in 2019. And basically he just made the point they didn't take that step. And that's just the reality of it. And they put them in a situation where they didn't feel confident after – training camp after the preseason that they made the right step now should that have been made earlier should that have been identified earlier you know to each the zone and and there's certainly an argument and you know Brad was asked that question too by Michael Hara here at the Detroit Lions I believe and and he just said look we you know we saw some things we wanted to develop these guys we wanted them to take the step we gave them every opportunity to take the step and they didn't take the step. And so, you know, then the decision was made. And, you know, it, it, it's a, probably a tough decision, right? You sign those guys in the offseason. You expect them to, 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 to be the guy. Yeah, so I'd say even going back, you know, when we decided to bring the two back, you know, every single decision we make, it goes through a very thorough process. And we want to be as rational and sound in, in our judgment as, as possible. So, um you know, even with, with Tim, you know, being that the wins didn't come in the games that he played, but those first games that he ever played in his entire life, we saw some things that encouraged us to want us to, to keep working with him. And then, you know, bringing back Blau, and he's got previous experience. And so um, we, 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 we had the plan in place. Uh, we felt good about it. And, you know, um, they just didn't quite make the jump that we expected them to make. And so uh, you just got to make some tough decisions, and uh, you just got to just um, find the uh, best solution that you can. Obviously, they have built a relationship with Jared Goff in that meeting room. And, and look, they know the offense. You know, Nate doesn't. So, you know, that'll be, you know, how quickly can he get up to speed? And so, um, obviously, tough decisions there. And, and you know, 
it is what it is, and and we'll just kind of see what kind of effect that has. You know, hopefully it, it it's something we don't ever have to talk about because Jared Goff is healthy. Jared Goff plays well, and every indication from training camp and the preseason is that he'll do just that. Um, he had a terrific. Um, he had a terrific uh, training camp, and you know, when asked about Jared specifically, you know, this is what Brad had to say about um, the camp that that Jared's had, and and the expectation for him moving forward, and and, and just why they did some of the things they did uh, with Jared this off season. Um, I will say, I do believe the confidence that that he has going into this year um, is, is has been a big difference, and I've always felt that he was a confident kid. Uh, you know. He's always been a very mentally tough kid, but, you know, I think us giving him ownership and, you know, letting him know, like, look, we believe in you, we're supporting you, we're going to put you in the best position to succeed, you know, you're the quarterback. And so us surrounding him with a little bit better supporting cast and giving him that, that ownership, I think that's, that's helped his confidence and it showed in this camp. You know, coming back out, you know, I, I, I thought it was also really interesting how Brad was asked if there was a position group, and, and Ray Agnew was asked this as well, if there was a position group in particular that they were kind of looking at, eyeing, you know, wanting to see develop through the course of, of training camp. And position group was the same as mine, and it was the secondary. Our secondary was one that, you know, going into camp, you know, we, let's just be honest, there was a lot of question marks back there. Rather, it was lack of experience, lack of play time, uh, you know, guys that are had some ailments, you know, dealing with. And, you know, I will say even starting off at safety, like it was, it was pretty bare at the end, not at the end of the season, but going, starting the off season, you know, you hopefully you can sign Tracy back and, you know, you, you know, what are you going to do on the next? And so um, we had to kind of collect as much competition as possible. And, you know, there were moves made along the way, um, you know, even doing like a, a late claim on a Juju Hughes. Uh, and, you know, I'll let Ray speak more on to, to Juju, but making a late claim like that, you know, during the postseason, out of weight, he comes in, and so I don't think a whole lot of noise was made about that. But you know that move ended up being big for us down the road. So um, that I'll say the secondary, and then you know I got appreciate the way Jeff Okuda and he earned it, and we were upfront and honest with him, and he didn't cower back down or anything. He he, he took it and he earned it, and so. A lot of those, a lot of those questions uh, were what were answered. You know, I thought there were a lot of question marks with that secondary. Obviously, you you, you resigned Tracy uh, Walker, and you knew he was, you know going to be a big part of that. Amani Oriwari had the breakout third season, third tied for third in the NFL with, with six interceptions. But you didn't know what was going to happen with Jeff Okuda coming back from that Achilles injury. You signed Deshaun Elliott, uh, a veteran guy, but, you know, obviously it's a new situation and, you know, he's been injured some and he was coming off a, a, a torn pec. So, um, you know, torn bicep, I think it was actually. Um, and, and so you just didn't know how that was going to kind of piece together. And I thought that unit from the beginning of camp to, um, you know, where they were in the joint practices a couple weeks ago and, and heading to Pittsburgh, um, you know, last week, I think that group really, really just progressed in this way. You know, it was just trending up the whole way. They had a really good last two weeks. And Brad in particular talked about Jeff Okuda and, and how good he's been and how impressed he's been. And we've talked about it on this podcast before, just what it would mean if Jeff Okuda, the number three pick, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, is that guy. And, and you know, I talked to Jeff after practice on Thursday and I asked him where he was physically, you know, from where he was before the Achilles injury and where, you know, he is right now. And normally with that kind of injury, some guys maybe lose a step, maybe you lose a little bit of strength in, in a leg, whatever. He told me that he is stronger and faster than he was when he ran out of the tunnel week one for San Francisco, um, you know, last year, right before that injury. And, and he's looked it. I mean, he's been really good. And that is a confident guy right now. And if he's good and, and if he's as good as he's shown the last – two weeks you know this line secondary can be a lot better and Ray Agnew he talked about the linebacker position and here's what Ray had to say about um you know wanting to see something out of that linebacker group 
But for me, the group that I, I was in, uh, interested in watching was the inside linebackers. And uh, I thought that group responded. I thought it was a lot of competition in that group. Uh, you brought in some new guys. You really only had a few guys that played last year. You brought in some new guys, and uh, you created competition. And I think that group responded very well. You know, that's good stuff from Ray on the linebackers. And that is a question mark, right? And look, they talked about Malcolm Rodriguez. They talk about Derek Barnes, you know, taking a next step and how, you know, with Malcolm Rodriguez, we've got to see it in the regular season. Obviously, he's been great in, in training camp in the preseason. But, you know, I think it is important that you, you have to take a step back a little bit. He's a rookie six round pick. He hasn't been schemed against yet. Like Philadelphia is going to have film on him and they're going to have a scheme for him. So can he do it when someone's scheming against you? So there was a little bit of pause, you know, by both, you know, Ray and Brad about Malcolm, but you obviously love what you've seen so far and and you hope he's going to be a, a key contributor first, second, third down along with Barnes, obviously along with Alex Anzalone. But that's still a group that you know, you want to see play much better than they did last year. And so, you know, it was good that Ray was looking at that unit and that Ray is excited about that unit. You know, one guy I've been excited about, and I think Lions fans, you know, and I know PJ behind the camera is probably excited about here too, is, is Aiden Hutchinson, you know, and he's a guy who um, he's just looked apart. You know, they, the Lions couldn't jump that card in fast enough on – uh, draft day just because they were excited that he fell to him and look he's done everything um to show that he was well worthy of that number two pick and and look it, it's a lions pass rush that was look 30th in the nfl in sacks last year you know their their pass rush win rate was was the second worst that unit needs to be better and i think what we've seen from aiden hutchinson um over the past month is is a, a, a guy whose motor never quits a guy who's got a plethora of pass rush moves uh, a guy who's advanced for his age just in terms of his work ethic and his film study he has done everything well with aiden um we we pretty much knew that he was a high floor player um so but that also comes as a question mark when it comes to draft sometimes because it's like oh well what's his upside and what you know is it is it but you know there was a lot of things that we knew that he could get better at and so him having the uh, immediate impact that he's had so far again he hadn't played a regular season NFL game yet but since he stepped out there on the grass you know he made it known pretty quickly that you know he he, he was about business and um you know there's some things that he's shown that I think some people didn't even know that he had. Um, I'll let Ray speak. Oh, yeah. on to that. I, I can't stop smiling. Uh, <laughs> I love the kid. The kid's relentless, man, uh, effort, and much better athlete than you thought he was in the draft process, man. It's the things he can do, uh, rushing the passer, you know, inside, off the edge, using his hands. He's very creative as a rusher. Uh, I'll just say this: We got the right one. Ray Agnew joked, and, and, and it was, I was the one who actually asked the question. I asked both Ray and uh, Brad just about, you know, Aiden. And you're obviously excited on draft night, and has, you know, what has he done to to, to, to further your thoughts of him over the last month? And there was just a big smile on Ray's face, and he even said it. He said, "I, I can't get a smile off because I love that kid." Um, Ray said he was a better athlete. Um, than they even that that Aiden is a better athlete than they even thought he was uh, on draft night. Um, he's just kind of checked off every box and and you know I know you guys out there you know love to hear that because there's a lot of expectations. You know you're the number two pick you're expected to start obviously, but what kind of impact can you have as a rookie? Can he be a double digit sack guy? Can he be a guy that really improves that pass rush opposite Charles Harris, who's you know also had a really nice um, you know training camp and and can those guys be kind of bookend guys that that you you think you can really count on so um to hear what they had to say about Aiden Hutchinson you know I was I was really really excited about that I was excited about the Harris stuff too and now obviously he led this team in sacks last year with seven and a half but but they were talking about him even taking another step forward um and and now you've got two guys that you're really excited about on the edge when Josh Pascal gets back you know what kind of juice can he bring in the middle and and some of the guys they have um, uh, on the interior so you know look it's, it's a defensive line that has to be better you guys know it 
I know it. Everybody knows it. I mean, there's a lot of question marks with this defense. And, and look, if, if the secondary is going to make their jump that, you know, we heard them talk about earlier, that defensive line has to take the jump too because, look, it's a marriage. Pass rush and cover is it, – it's, it's a marriage. It's what makes defense. You can't cover guys unless you get the pass rush and vice versa. So um, I think it's encouraging – to see how the defense has played the last two weeks, starting in Indy um, and then, you know, going over to Pittsburgh too, the, that first unit, um, you know, I feel better about it um, than I did at the start of training camp. I'm just going to be honest. I was I was kind of worried about that unit from the linebackers to some of the new pieces in the secondary. Was Jeff going to be the guy? Will Aiden live up to it? Do they have enough interior? Um, and I've been – happily surprised with the way they've played the last two weeks and and I feel a lot better about that defense you know going into the Philly week now we'll see you know that's a pretty good offense over there that's a a mobile quarterback and you know they've got some pieces and some weapons there so you know we'll see how it goes it it, but I, I I feel better about it um, and I feel better about this team overall. Offensively, they've been great. Um, and, and to see that leap from the defense ha- has been good, and, and you know, I've really liked to see it. Um, there was an update on Jamison Williams. Um, you know, he was, uh, Brad was asked about Jamison, and I think it, it's a theme that is shared by Dan and, and that Dan's talked about all through camp is they're going to be patient with that young man. Yeah, you know, he, he, he is on track, you know. Um, you know, again, I'm not going to put out a hard date, but I will say um, the weeks and weeks that he's strung together with his rehab and, um, you know, he's so he's so gifted from a genetic standpoint, you know. Um, once he keeps that consistency going, uh, it actually could accelerate that return that we're thinking. You know, you, you got to be a little bit conservative and, you know, on the safer side. When it comes to forecasting, those those, those returns of play, but um, hopefully he stays on track, and um, you know, hopefully it's sooner than later. But we're going to continue to be smart with him. We've always said that from day one. I know he's chopping out the bit. I mean, he'll put on a helmet right now and go out there, and he would jog a slant route if he could. But he, I mean, that that. But we got to be smart because you know we didn't we didn't make that move for him just for year one. That's just a long term. Um, they are not rushing him back. Um, look, he's on the reserve uh, NFI non-football injury list. That means he's out for at least four um, games, and that means he can't practice during that time either. So, you know, you have to remember that you know, he hasn't practiced all camp, hasn't practiced all off season. Um, and so he won't even be eligible to practice until that week of the Seattle game, week five, and then you've got a bye week. So it's not like he, it's a situation where you can say, okay, um, you know, he's off NFI, he's he's ready to practice, and you throw him in a game. It's, it's going to take a little bit more time. And and Brad said today, look, they're not going to rush it at all. Um, they're going to take their time. It, it, he wasn't drafted 12 overall. They didn't move up 20 spots in the draft. Um for him to perform and, and be that guy for them this year. Now, they still think he can, and I think November is probably a time, you know, right around the, the time that the calendar turns from October to November, right in there, sometime after the bye, after he gets, you know, a few weeks of practice that you can mix him into some things, um, and, and we could see him, but they are not going to rush him. Um, that was a draft pick made for the future. They think he could be a big part of their offense moving forward, and and they're not going to rush him back. And I, and I thought that was good and that's been the common theme by both Brad and Dan um, throughout so um, you know it was it was good it was a good session uh, I, I feel better coming out of it w- w- with some of the excitement that that Brad and, and Ray have about some of the young guys you know some of the Derek guys that are you know you hope take that next step right like a Derek Barnes and just how important he is um, what they talked about with Jeff Okuda uh, the camp that that Jared Goff's had and, and just how much an improvement they've seen with him and and, and the confidence level with Jared um, look when you when we when you tell your quarterback hey we believe in you you know, the Los Angeles Rams didn't, and that's why they made the trade. But when you say, hey, we believe in you, here's this offense that we want to tailor around you and build around you, and here's some weapons that, that, that we think can help you. 
you know, all that does is is raise Jared Goff's confidence level, and we've seen that through camp. We've seen him, um, you know, have a really, really good camp, and and you add that with the offensive line, and, and DeAndre Swift, and TJ Hawkinson, and, and DJ Chark's been good, and obviously we also, what, what Amon Ross St. Brown did, and, and offensively you felt, you know, really good, and now feeling better about the defense too. So, look, I'm excited about, you know, where this team is from, where they started camp, to where they are now heading into the regular season. And that's fun to say, right? The regular season. We've got the Philadelphia Eagles at Ford Field September 11th. It, it, it's fun. Now the games mean something. And and look, I've got a busy show for you guys next week too, leading into that September 11th game against the Eagles. I've got Dave Spadaro uh, from the Philadelphia Eagles. He's going to preview that matchup. Stacey Dales from the NFL Network, she's going to stop by. Um, and we're going to talk NFC North. Um, she's been at the Green Bay Packers camp. She's been at Chicago Bears. She was at Minnesota Vikings. She's got all the skinny on the NFC North and those teams. So we'll do that. I'm going to have a key matchup segment that's going to be new to the pod uh, next week. And obviously, we'll be talking post game right afterward. You know, me and PJ Clark will, will get on and we'll break down the game. Um, but so I've got a lot of stuff leading in. We got a little stuff afterward. So obviously, stay with the 20 Minute Huddle podcast. We have you covered from week one through week 18. Uh, it'll be a fun time. Hope you stay around with me. And hey, if you guys ever you know, want to, me to sit down with a player, uh, you can uh, tweet me. You can email. Um, if you guys want to hear from somebody, I'll probably have a player stop by next week too, uh, just to talk. Uh, you know, Philadelphia in that preview. So um, you know, make sure you guys you know let me know who you want to hear, and, and it, it'll be a fun episode. So um, look forward to the run. It's regular season. Let's go.